Hello. Now that you have all the test equipment to measure your home environment for RF and uh, EMF issues, and as you know, as we've talked about many times, the importance of mitigating your sleeping area for minimum exposure, um, the challenge then becomes, uh, what about the rest of things in, in life and uh, outside in the world? As many of you know, um, the trend in the world is wireless convenience. And uh, in addition to RF challenges, there can be some uh, magnetic field challenges as well. Uh, in the back here, there's a large DC brushless motor. And I thought, you know, at some point I really should uh, measure what's uh, coming off uh, for mag fields here in the, in the seating position. And uh, to make a long story short, I was shocked at the levels that were uh, coming off this thing. And uh, we can explain why. Um, I'll show you in, in a chart here. Um, sustained uh, magnetic fields um, around one, one and a half kilohertz, the motor controller uh, frequency. Um, I was seeing around 10 milligauss and peaks were 45 milligauss. And, uh, that didn't sit well with me, uh, particularly as if, if any of you have watched some of our earlier videos, me being electrosensitive um, and some of the issues uh, and exposures that I had at a, a very early stage in my life, I am particularly sensitive to high magnetic fields. And so I started to feel some, uh, some consequences while riding this. And I thought, oh, here we go. So this is a thing, you know, uh, I guess right now the electrosensitive people are the canaries in the coal mine, if you're going to use an analogy. What we're going to do here is just quickly go through uh, what I had to go through to solve the problems of this machine. All right, so looking at the design, uh, the motor controller is sitting back uh, back here under the second seat in the storage compartment so it's, it's it's sitting up there the batteries are all sitting on the bottom in the floor and the uh, the magnetic fields coming from the battery connections to the motor controller are not an issue because that's just um, that's just a dc current and there will be some momentary spikes when you're um, uh, kicking the throttle. But that's not the issue. The issue is that the motor controller is sitting up here and what we found, what I found was uh, the motor phase wires were going down along here and then uh, to the front and then traveling back towards uh, the motor itself. So there was a big long loop and as I'll show you in the pictures, um, the the phase lines were just in a, in a bundled cable. And to solve that, uh, from experience, from uh, mitigating other issues, uh, the motor phase lines, in order to uh, help self-shield the mag magnetic fields, um, I actually braided those wires. And um, I moved the motor controller from up here down into the bottom of the uh, storage cabinet. So that involved uh, rerouting some wires and um, doing some uh, wire splicing and things like that. So I guess the point is this is something that the average person that's uh, not involved in electronics or familiar with soldering skills, that's not something the average person can do. But it is something the manufacturer can do. So this is a, a well-made mechanically well-made uh, vehicle. It's fantastic. Love it. Um, but if the manufacturer were aware that, hey, uh, magnetic fields at those levels are not good, um, all they would have to do is just redesign their wiring harnesses and hardware configuration that the motor controller sits in a different place and that the wires going from the motor controller to the motor itself are decoupled properly to really limit the uh, effect of magnetic fields on, uh, uh, on what's happening here. So um, again, this was before, this is the chart I'll show you of the levels that we had before. And then after moving the motor controller to the new position, here's what I'm seeing now. So after going through all this, it was very much worth it. 
but I feel badly for the people that can't do these sorts of things. And so again, if there is a manufacturer that's watching this video, um, they can just think about um, where they put their motor controller. So in short, there was a solution to this problem. Yes, it did involve some wiring harness changes. Uh, and if you can't do those sorts of things yourself, you probably know somebody that uh, can help you out. Uh, awareness is key if you have the test equipment to know what's going on. And again, as I said, hopefully manufacturers will actually start considering these things in their design. Because if this thing were designed to just have the motor controller sitting very close to the motor itself, then there wouldn't be these issues itself. So I hope this video is helpful and uh, thanks for watching.